Title, Duke for President Description This book is sure to become a literary classic. It is a short, well-written piece that amounts to a ton of information presented in a small package. It addresses modern Americanism from a social, political, and spiritual perspective. The author is a young Negro American who shares his life's experiences in education, politics, and personal development. Unlike many other autobiographies, this author addresses America's problems, challenges, and shortcomings, then provide groundbreaking ideas to solve these ills. The ideas in this book are many of those thought about by average Americans, but were never adequately articulated to the masses. This book will only become better with time. Chapter 2 Personal History I grew up in what we in America call a dysfunctional family. My mother Arlene Hogan and father Wilbert Brown divorced before I made three years old, the same year he nicknamed me Duke. I had two older half-sisters Janet and Nicola. I had one older half-brother, Jerry, who is now deceased. We all had different fathers. Unlike my siblings, I was given the privilege to spend every weekend with my grandparents, Wilbert and Martha Brown, beginning at around age seven. My grandparents lived in Ponchatoula, the city next to Hammond where my mother lived. To this day, I really can't understand why they never let me down. No matter the weather or season, I could be found there with them on Saturday and Sunday of every year. After I graduated from junior high school, my grandparents allowed me to move in their home full-time as I attend high school. Although this move did not originally change my academic performance, it changed my political outlook forever. The change occurred because living there allowed me to relax and become an objective observer of my circumstances and not a subjective victim of it. My grandparent used a hands-off approach toward me but fostered an environment conducive to my personal growth and independence. Their mere presence was my protection. Prior to attending high school, I had already decided that I would become a professional businessman. However, I became intrigued with politics after my introduction to high school civics. One position in particular that I believe fit me perfectly was the office of mayor. My intense interest in politics seemed to spring up overnight as I began faithfully watching the evening news and considering our government's policies toward its citizens. After nearly two years living with my grandparents, my father, who was living in Clinton, Iowa, summoned me to move there to live under his care. I arrive in the spring of 1989. With only a 10th grade education, I had to decide on the best way forward. I applied to attend the local high school but soon opted out as I would be 20 years old by graduation. Instead of continuing the high school marathon, I enrolled myself into a general education program sponsored by a local college, Clinton Community College. My Iowan education marked the first time that I encountered Caucasian teachers and instructors who not only encouraged me to learn, but they seemed to want me to become smarter, just for my own sake. This fine treatment continued as I graduate the GED program as its valedictorian and on to enrollment as a first-year college student at that same college. I really began to love the Iowan people. I was accepted into the college's two-year business administration program. One day while just hanging out in the campus student union area, a tall slender guy walked up to me and began a casual conversation. After introductions, he asked me whether I was into politics at all. I responded with an affirmative gesture. He then asked if I had ever heard of the politician known as Bill Clinton. I admit that I hadn't as far as I could remember. He further explained that Bill Clinton was the two-term governor of the state of Arkansas who was now seeking the presidency. He told me his job was to travel around the state campaigning and familiarizing voters. He then asked if I'd like to join him in this campaign to get Bill Clinton elected. I said sure, but I needed more information about the guy since I wasn't at the time an Advent follower of Arkansas politics. He began to describe Bill Clinton as a cool and down-to-earth type of guy. He assured me that if I were to meet Bill I would agree. He also mentioned, in a sly voice that Bill even smokes weed. After mentioning several more of Clinton's attributes, I said sure pal tell me how I can help in your cause. 
He told me to just go around my local area and do as he was and tell all of my friends and family to support Bill Clinton during the upcoming presidential election. I did exactly that. I felt pretty good when Bill Clinton got elected. In 1991, I was still living in Clinton, Iowa and doing pretty good for myself. I got my first cashier job at Hop and Shop, a local popular convenience store that also doubled as a deli, where I worked one day a week in the kitchen. I prepared and served fried chicken and pizza. This was considered some of the best fried chicken in town and the pizza was pretty good too, especially on the night of the week that I'd work. Customers would be amused as I tossed the dough high in the air as though I was some Italian pizza specialist. I had a wonderful boss who treated me like one of the family. After about a year of faithful work, my mother requested that we reunite after living apart for the past three years. I would miss my hop and shop family as I moved back to Louisiana to live among my immediate family again. Thanks for listening and stay tuned to this channel as additional chapters from Duke for President will be released periodically.